Hi everyone, it's Aga from EurekaCrystalBeats.com and I'm here with another fun and easy tutorial for you. Before I get started, just a quick reminder to check out the rest of our channel and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you always know when we're posting new content. What I'm going to show you how to make today is this super uh, fancy but also super easy necklace. It has this really, really nice, a little bit unconventional shape with this kind of a drop uh, down the middle and this is actually not a drop this is a shell because i use this lovely metal kind of pink wash uh, shell with this so this necklace is pretty basic the fun thing about it is how nicely it presents around your neck so i would guess that the star of uh, this work is actually the beading wire so this is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using Beadalon uh, beading wire. This is the uh, 0.015 inches version. One thing you might have noticed is that it's Beadalon 7. That means it's made out of seven strands in one wire. Beadalon beading wire is actually available in three different variations. This is a 7, but there's also 19 and Beadalon 49. So the numbers refer to how many small twisted wires uh, make up the wire, the actual wires. So this one, Beadalon 7, has seven wires uh, that are twisted together. Beadalon 49 has 49 wires. Contrary to what you might imagine, the more wires, the more supple uh, the uh, beading wire, because this determines the flexibility of the wire. So for example, seven, like I have here, it's not exactly stiff, it's still going to uh, drape nicely around the neck, but 19 will drape even nicer and 49 will drape like in the most flowy and supple way. So uh, when you choose the type of wire that you're going to use, you can consider the amount of drape that you want. And uh, I chose this one because I really want this nice shape of the necklace to be kept but if you don't know which you will prefer for your necklace you may use 19 this is the middle one and this will do for most of the work and then you can try different sizes so there's a 7 the 19 and the 49 and all of them are uh, frankly great uh, one more note, I will be cutting my wire with scissors, but if you have uh, cutting pliers or especially soft wire cutting pliers, do it with them uh, because cutting uh, this uh, wire with actual scissors will make them blunt, will dull them. But I don't mind my getting dull because they're old. And you're going to need just about as long as you want your necklace to be plus maybe three inches. So the first version of this necklace that I made, I made using these lovely milky tohos and these rosy demi rounds and this pink wash shell. The version that I'm going to be doing now is using these really, really amazing uh, Matubo Ionic beads. And this is, I think, the largest that we have, which is 2.0. So they are big, but it's just going to make it quicker. I'm also going to be using Toho's. Here I have Toho 8's. I'm also going to need this other shell that I matched to the Matubo beads. I'm going to need two jump rings. These are 20 gauge, uh, 5 millimeter. I'm also going to need two wire guards, just like this and some crimp tubes. Here I have two millimeter crimp tubes and I think these are the smallest that can fit two strands of this beading wire. So they're in the back so that I can crimp them later on. Okay, so that's all the materials. I'm going to be using uh, two pairs of pliers for tools, uh, one for uh, crimping the crimp tube and uh, two for opening and closing the jump rings. Okay, let's start. So the first thing you wanna do is measure your neck or rather the length that you want your necklace to be. In my case, it's roughly 14 inches. I want it to be quite short, but not quite like a choker. 
So half of 14 is 7. So this is how long I will need for that first half of uh, my necklace. So once I know this, I can start stringing. And I'm going straight in with the beads, starting with the uh, Ionic 2.0, because later on the crimp tube might hide a little bit inside it, because it has a really, really large hole, if you notice. An 11.0 might go through it. Shouldn't, but might. Okay, and I'm just going to go in with the beads and I'm going to string them interchangeably until I've reached my 7 inch point. Alright, now here I have my 7 inches of beads. This is going to be enough. And what I'm going to be doing now is make this little loop. So I'm going to make a loop adding the shell charm and I'm going to go back with my wire through that uh, one uh, two o bead and I'm going to continue with the other half of my necklace. So what I do is I pick up six eight o's. I'm adding on the charm. And I'm picking up another six, eight O's. And now you can make your loop longer or bigger, depending on what you like. You can add other beads, of course. It's all a matter of preference. I'm just giving you an example size. Okay, that's six. And I'm going right through that last Matubo again, but just just through that one bead. And this is going to create a sort of a loop like that. Don't worry, it's going to get tighter when we finish the whole thing. All right, now it's time to continue with the other half of the necklace and I'm doing exactly the same thing for the same length. All right, I'm done with the stringing. Now, if you're left with uh, too much or not enough wire on either end, what you do is you just pull it through until you have enough to just make a loop and go back and have a little bit of space for any errors. So I'm going to leave maybe this much or that just a little bit too much. This much should be enough. Okay, and with the measurement, remember that now's the time when you can just, you know, try your necklace on, see if it's going to be just enough, too long or too short and add something on either end because at this point you can also uh, cut off the other end from the spool. I didn't cut it off previously because I don't like waste, so that's why I didn't cut it off before. Okay, how to finish your necklace. What you're going to do now is you're going to take that tiny little crimp tube and you put it on your wire. Now be careful because it may uh, go straight through your bead, so I'm just holding it. And this is something I could actually uh, have done earlier, but now I'm squeezing my wire guard so that the two ends meet sort of together in the middle as much as I can. And I put my wire through that wire guard on one end. And now I'm going to put my wire through the wire guard on the other end and through that crimp tube as well.
just like that. This is what it looks like. And actually, I'm going to pull on the other side. So I'm not going to pull on this end. I'm going to pull on this side. Because we haven't finished the other end yet. So you can always adjust it. So after you've pulled it all together, it should look somewhat like this. And what I do now is I take my pliers, take the most tapered pliers that you got and squish that crimp tube. You can obviously also use a special crimping pliers. You can also just tug it on the other end a little bit as well so that it's super, super tight. And now you can either cut off this end or I'm going to hide it in my beads. So I'm just going to slide the uh, 2 o bead right on that wire over there. And I just pull tight. There, that's one end done. And as I've said, the crimp bead just is hiding inside the bead, inside the matubo bead. So uh, it looks quite nice. And it's also secure. So on the other end, I cut off just enough so that I feel safe finishing off the piece. And we're going to do the same thing. Maybe I'll just squeeze the wire guard first now. You can also use your pliers to do it. Just remember not to squeeze too tight because those tiny little tubes might get squished. This is enough. Now the crimp tube. So first the crimp tube. I'm still holding it. Then the wire guard. Then the other end of the wire guard. And again the crimp tube. And for this I'm actually going to be using my pliers and I'm going to go straight through several of the beads with the wire and pull it from here. You might want to let it a little bit loose first because that crimp tube is kind of tight. So I'm going to move it a little down. And I'm just moving the crimp tube a little bit down and pulling on the wire. Until when I pull, everything is nice and snug. Then I know that this is the place where I need to slide the crimp tube uh, next, right next to the Matuba bead. And that's going to be um, the end of the journey. Only now I need to find it because it's hidden inside the matubo. Okay, so what you want is you want to hold on to that crimp tube so that it doesn't get lost inside the matubo. And then you hold the crimp tube and pull on 
the remaining wire so that it's more or less nice and snug. It won't be like completely snug because there's still a space inside the Matubo that the cream tube could slide uh, on, but we won't be able to crimp it then. But I just use the space that I have and I crimp the crimp tube. I go to the other side and I crimp it from the other side. If it's not exactly even and there's still some wire showing, that's okay. Uh, what's important is that the wire doesn't get out and it does not. So I can now cut off the excess wire, which will hide in the beads. And this is what it will look like. Now, one thing I forgot to tell you about is the clasp. In here, I use just a regular lobster clasp and I really like them. They're very functional. You can also use a toggle clasp or really any other clasp that you like. For this one, I'm also going to use uh, just a regular uh, lobster clasp, just like this one. So the only thing you need to do to get your necklace ready to wear is open a jump ring, get it through that wire guard, attach your clasp, and now for this one, uh, you can also attach a bit of adjustment chain so you can adjust the length. I try to make the length perfect for me. So I don't need that. I only need this one jump ring. Just opening it and finding that other wire guard. There, I think it really has a sort of a beachy vibe with that shell and with the color of these turquoise a little bit, uh, Matuba beads in this Ionic version. So that they do look like turquoise. And this will look really lovely on your neck because it will arrange itself in this really, really nice shape. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. All of the materials that I showed you today can be found at EurekaCrystalBeads.com. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!